Carl Wilhelm Schiele was a Swedish Pomeranian and pharmaceutical chemist. Isaac Asimov called him Hard Luck Schiele because he made a number of chemical discoveries before others who are generally given the credit. For example, Schiele discovered oxygen, although Joseph Priestley published his findings first, and identified molybdenum, tungsten, barium, hydrogen, and chlorine before Humphrey Davy, among others. Sheila discovered organic acids tartaric, oxalic, uric, lactic, and citric, as well as hydrofluoric, hydrocyanic, and arsenic acids. He preferred speaking German to Swedish his whole life, as German was commonly spoken among Swedish pharmacists. Biography Sheila was born in Stralsund, in western Pomerania, which at the time was a Swedish dominion inside the Holy Roman Empire. Sheila's father Joachim or Johann, Christian Schiele, was a grain dealer and brewer from a respected German family. His mother was Margarethe Eleanor Warren Cross. Friends of Schiele's parents taught him the art of reading prescriptions and the meaning of chemical and pharmaceutical signs. Then, in 1757, at age 14 Karl was sent to Gothenburg as an apprentice pharmacist with another family friend and apothecary. Martin Andreas Bosch Sheila retained this position for eight years. During this time he ran experiments late into the night and read the works of Nicholas Lemery, Caspar Newman, Johann von Lohenstern-Kunkel and George Ernst Stahl, the champion of the phlogiston theory. Much of Sheila's later theoretical speculations were based upon Stahl. In 1765 Sheila worked under the progressive and well-informed apothecary, C. M. Kajlström in Malmö and became acquainted with Anders Johan Retzius who was a lecturer at the University of Lund and later a professor of chemistry at Stockholm. Sheila arrived in Stockholm between 1767 and 1769 and worked as a pharmacist. During this period he discovered tartaric acid and with his friend, Retzius, studied the relation of quicklime to calcium carbonate. While in the capital, he also became acquainted with many luminaries, such as, Abraham Back, Peter Jonas Bergius, Bank Bergius, and Karl Friedrich von Skultzenheim. In the fall of 1770 Sheila became director of the laboratory of the Great Pharmacy of Locke, at Uppsala which is about 40 miles north of Stockholm. The laboratory supplied chemicals to Professor of Chemistry Torbern Bergman. A friendship developed between Sheila and Bergman after Sheila analyzed a reaction which Bergman and his assistant Johann Gottlieb Gann could not resolve. The reaction was between melted salt petri and acetic acid which produced a red vapor. Further study of this reaction later led to Sheila's discovery of oxygen, see the theory of phlogiston below. Based upon this friendship and respect Sheila was given free use of Bergman's laboratory. Both men were profiting from their working relationship. In 1774 Sheila was nominated by Peter Jonas Bergius to be a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences and was elected February 4, 1775. In 1775 Sheila also managed for a short time a pharmacy in coping. Between the end of 1776 and the beginning of 1777 Sheila established his own business there. On October 29, 1777, Sheila took his seat for the first, and only time, at a meeting of the Academy of Sciences and on November 11 passed the examination as apothecary before the Royal Medical College and did so with highest honors. After his return to coping he devoted himself, outside of his business, to scientific researches which resulted in a long series of important papers. Existing Theories Before Sheila by the time he was a teenager, Sheila had learned the dominant theory of gases which in the 1770s was the phlogiston theory. Phlogiston, classified as matter of fire, was supposed to be released from any burning material, and when it was exhausted, combustion would stop. When Sheila discovered oxygen he called it fire air as it supported combustion. Sheila explained oxygen using phlogistical terms because he did not believe that his discovery disproved the phlogiston theory. Before Sheila made his discovery of oxygen, he studied air. Air was thought to be an element that made up the environment in which chemical reactions took place but did not interfere with the reactions. 
Sheila's investigation of air enabled him to conclude that air was a mixture of fire air and foul air, in other words, a mixture of two gases. Sheila performed numerous experiments in which he heated substances such as salt petri, potassium nitrate, manganese dioxide, heavy metal nitrates, silver carbonate and mercuric oxide. In all of these experiments, he isolated the same gas, his fire air, which he believed combined with phlogiston in materials to be released during heat-releasing reactions. However, his first publication, Chemisk Abhandlung von der Luft und dem Führer, was delivered to the printer Sweeteris in 1775, but not published until 1777, at which time both Joseph Priestley and Lavoisier had already published their experimental data and conclusions concerning oxygen and the phlogiston theory. The first English edition, Chemical Observation and Experiments on Air and Fire was published in 1780, with an introduction Chemical Treatise on Air and Fire. The Theory of Phlogiston Sheila achieved astonishingly prolific and important results without the expensive laboratory equipment to which his Parisian contemporary Antoine Laurent Lavoisier was accustomed. Through the studies of Lavoisier, Joseph Priestley, Sheila, and others, chemistry was made a standardized field with consistent procedures. Although Sheila was unable to grasp the significance of his discovery of the substance that Lavoisier later named oxygen, his work was essential for the abandonment of the long-held theory of phlogiston. Sheila's study of the gas not yet named oxygen was prompted by a complaint by Torburn Olaf Bergman, a professor at UPS University who would eventually become Sheila's friend. Bergman informed Sheila that the saltpeter he had purchased from Sheila's employer, after long heating, produced red vapors, now known to be nitrogen dioxide, when it came into contact with acetic acid. Sheila's quick explanation was that the saltpeter had absorbed phlogiston with the heat had been reduced to nitrite, in modern terms, and gave off a new phlogisticated gas as an active principle when combined with an acid, even a weak acid. Bergman next suggested that Sheila analyze the properties of manganese dioxide. It was through his studies of manganese dioxide that Sheila developed his concept of fire air, his name for oxygen. He ultimately obtained oxygen by heating mercuric oxide, silver carbonate, magnesium nitrate, and other nitrate salts. Sheila wrote about his findings to Lavoisier who was able to see the significance of the results. His discovery of oxygen, CA 1771, was chronologically earlier than the corresponding work of Priestley and Lavoisier, but he did not publish this discovery until 1777, after both of his rivals had published. Although Sheila would always believe in some form of the phlogiston theory, his work reduced phlogiston to an unusually simple form, complicated only by the fact that chemists of Sheila's day still believed that light and heat were elements and were to be found in combination with them. Thus, Sheila assumed that hydrogen was composed of phlogiston, a reducing principle lost when objects were burned, plus heat. Sheila speculated that his fire air or oxygen, which he found the active part of air, estimating it to compose one quarter of air, combined with the phlogiston in objects to produce either light or heat, light and heat were presumed to be composed of differing proportions of phlogiston and oxygen. When other chemists later showed water is produced when burning hydrogen and that rusting of metals added weight to them and that passing water over hot iron gave hydrogen, Sheila modified his theory to suggest that oxygen was the salt, or saline principle of water, and that when added to iron, water was reproduced, which added weight to the iron as rust. New Elements and Compounds In addition to his joint recognition for the discovery of oxygen, Sheila is argued to have been the first to discover other chemical elements such as barium, 1772, manganese, 1774, molybdenum, 1778, and tungsten, 1781, as well as several chemical compounds, including citric acid, lactic acid, glycerol, hydrogen cyanide, also known, in aqueous solution, as prussic acid, hydrogen fluoride and hydrogen sulfide, 1777. In addition, he discovered a process similar to pasteurization, along with a means of mass-producing phosphorus, 
1769, leading Sweden to become one of the world's leading producers of matches. Sheila made one other very important scientific discovery in 1774, arguably more revolutionary than his isolation of oxygen. He identified lime, silica, and iron in a specimen of pyrolusite, impure manganese dioxide, given to him by his friend, Johann Gottlieb Gann, but could not identify an additional component, this was the manganese, which Sheila recognized was present as a new element, but could not isolate. When he treated the pyrolusite with hydrochloric acid over a warm sand bath, a yellow-green gas with a strong odor was produced. He found that the gas sank to the bottom of an open bottle and was denser than ordinary air. He also noted that the gas was not soluble in water. It turned corks a yellow color and removed all color from wet, blue litmus paper and some flowers. He called this gas with bleaching abilities, deflogisticated muriatic acid, deflogisticated hydrochloric acid, or oxidized hydrochloric acid. Eventually, Sir Humphrey Davy named the gas chlorine. Chlorine's bleaching properties were eventually turned into an industry by Berzelius, and became the foundation of a second industry of disinfection and deodorization of putrefied tissue and wounds, including wounds in living humans, in the hands of Labar Rack, by 1824. Death In the fall of 1785, Sheila began to suffer from symptoms described as kidney disease. In early 1786, he also contracted a disease of the skin, which, combined with kidney problems, so enfeebled him that he could foresee an early death. With this in mind, he married the widow of his predecessor Pole, two days before he died, so that he could pass undisputed title to his pharmacy and his possessions to her. While Sheila's experiments generated substances which have long since been found to be hazardous, the compounds and elements he used to start his experiments were dangerous to begin with, especially heavy metals. Like most of his contemporaries, in an age where there were few methods of chemical characterization, Sheila would smell and taste any new substances he discovered. Cumulative exposure to arsenic, mercury, lead, their compounds, and perhaps hydrofluoric acid which he had discovered, and other substances took their toll on Sheila who died at the early age of 43, on May 21, 1786, at his home in Coping. Doctors said that he died of mercury poisoning.